The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 9, Teaching 268. Love each other. Beloved disciples, when my word has ceased to be heard on the day marked by my will, take care to not sleep waiting for fulfillment, because your faculties will be impaired. Keep in mind that from the day you stop hearing me, a new development will begin for you by means of which you will achieve communication of spirit to spirit. 2. Your sensitivity will have to be higher every day so that in your inspiration you will feel my presence and soon fill the void that the absence of my word will leave in you. 3. If some fall into that weakness of which I speak, remember this teaching so that at the moment you surrender to the sentence. Praying you will remember my words that will have been saved in your spirit and with joy you will see your gifts reappear that you thought you had lost forever. 4. Do not be afraid, if you really pray, you will be free from all temptation. 5. People, if you have won the tests that prevented the freedom of the spirit, do not create a new test with your disobedience, so stop the elevation of your spirit. 6. Think that the hour of your testimony is drawing near, and that is why you must prepare carefully to be my true witnesses. 7. Humanity does not know that I have been among you, that I have come to manifest myself spiritually within a humble gathering of men and women. When you know my message, it will be because my word will have already stopped being heard by the lips of my spokesman. 8. It is not my will that all peoples listen to me in this way, because not all would be willing to receive me so. It will be easier for them to receive the message through those who witnessed my new revelation and believe in their testimony, that if they had contemplated the spokesman in ecstasy giving my word, 9. This is precisely the mission that awaits this people, that of speaking truthfully and spiritually about the doctrine, the lessons and teachings that they spiritually received from their master. 10. There are peoples whose spirit is asleep for my lessons, because they have devoted themselves only to the development of your mind, they are the peoples who worship science. Others, whose materialistic doctrines have made the spirit slave of the world, they are those who dream of the power of the earth. There are also peoples that, although religious, do not have the Christian seed that is the foundation for the spirituality that I have come to teach you at this time. 11. All these peoples are like great lands that I am going to entrust to my workers. But before my new message reaches the world, each people and each nation will have a preparation. Some will have war, others will have confusion of ideas. But when they are eager for light, eager for truth and peace, that will be the appointed hour that my sours reach out with love and charity the divine seed entrusted to them. 12. There are also peoples who must first have knowledge of what my coming was in the second era and what they revealed of my word and my works, so that they can receive my new message as the revelation of the third era. 13. Times of struggle, confusion and purification will humanity live before light, spirituality and true freedom of worship and faith to come. 14. Israel, you are remembering the triumphal entry of the Master into the city of Jerusalem. Through the ages you have preserved in your heart my examples and that has served you so that now, that you live in the time of light, you find the infinite content of those teachings. 15. The earth does not retain any trace of my passage, because I erased all signs. I wanted my footprint to be captured in the conscience of my children, that that path of love, Light and sacrifice shine in the purest of each man. 16. Blood sealed my work in the world so that its memory would be indelible and you see, nearly 2,000 years ago I went among you and you remember my passion as if it had been yesterday. I bless you because in you a word that says, a single seed of mine is not lost because sooner or later it will have to germinate. 17. In triumph the crowds received me as I entered the city of Jerusalem. From the villages and the counties they came in crowds, men, women and children to watch the Master's entrance into the city. They were the ones who had received the wonder and the proof of the power of the Son of God. Blind who already saw, dumb who could now sing, paralyzed that left their bed to hurry to contemplate the Master at the Paschal Feast. 18. I knew that this triumph was momentary, I had already anticipated to my disciples what was to happen later. It was just the beginning of my struggle and now far from that event. 
I tell you that the light of my truth continues to fight with the darkness of ignorance, sin and imposture, so I must add that my absolute triumph has not come yet. 19. How can you believe that entry into Jerusalem has meant the triumph of my cause, if there were few who had been converted and were many who did not know who I was? 20. And even if that humanity had completely converted to my word, were there not many generations to come? 21. That instant of joy, that fleetingly triumphant entrance, was only the image of the triumph of light, of good, of truth, love and justice, the day that must come and to which you are all invited, know that if only one of my children were outside of the new Jerusalem, there would be no party because God could not speak of triumph. He could not celebrate his victory if his power would not have been able to save the last of his children. 22. Now, at this time, you who have felt my presence and listening to my word, dispose and decorate your spirit, so that I may penetrate your heart as if it were the city that receives me. I bless you for your preparation and I tell you that you are complying with spirituality, but do not take your commemoration as if in reality was already the celebration of the triumph of truth. 23. This is only the beginning of a new time of struggle, of a triumph definitive for the salvation, the liberation and the elevation of your spirit. 24. Unite all to sing a hymn that is an expression of joy, hope in triumph and harmony between you. 25. People, you have been chosen at this time so that my word may be spread through you as the dew of grace in humanity. Rise up and seek your progress so that at the end of your mission and your struggle, you come to my presence to be sung in union with the Master, that triumphal song, whose echoes will echo eternally. 26. Only man represents me on earth, because he has been formed in the image and likeness of my spirit. More for what you can say that you are my representatives, you must live in constant preparation, practicing my law. If you want to be my disciples, take up the cross and follow me, and in this way your spirit will be perfected. Who can make you weaken your purpose if you have faith in me? 27. I have tested your humility, your love and meekness to make you know your interior. I know you, more it is necessary that you know what you are capable of and only the tests will give you the opportunity to meet each other. 28. Many times you ask me, what is this life for and why do we have to suffer so much? And I tell you, the spirit must rise on its own merits from the lowest plane to reach the pinnacle of perfection. All beings have been subjected to the law of evolution. I also tell you that your spirit restores at this time in that my judgment has been unleashed in the universe, all the faults that it has committed, not only in your world but in all dwellings where my children live. But do not cry, but rather give me thanks, because after this time is when the spirit will be purified, you will be closer to me and there will be a better disposition to comply, because you will have returned to the path. I am with you like Cyrene, so that you will not faint in the test. 29. You are remembering my passion, you feel that this sacrifice is renewed, at every moment you meditate and form resolutions to overcome the weakness of the flesh and rise above the miseries of this world. And I say to you, watch because you are still weak. At the time of the second era, I was followed by large crowds who claimed to love me and be faithful to me. And when the world judged my acts, gave his sentence and those who followed me were persecuted. Those same spirits in whom I had poured my love, they denied me and turned away from me. 30. Today you tell me that you love me and that you believe in my word and I know that if I put you through great tests, many of you would leave me. Your destiny is to fight until you reach the spiritual elevation that is the supreme joy. 31. Here I am among you calling your heart. Do you think that my peace is complete when I contemplate you in constant wars? That is why I have come as a great warrior, to fight against darkness and evil. And with me they have the spirits of good, the spiritual world, which have also come to complete my work. How long will this fight last? Until all my children have been saved. But I have not brought pain. I just want to transform you with love. 32. Those who have studied my word from past times, when contemplating my manifestation in this time in which I have returned among men, they thank me for having allowed them to be witnesses of these teachings, and to all I say, as you have seen me appear full of splendor, 
You will see me go in 1950, and up to that scale you will rise in each day, to meet your master. 33. Then you will have to face the world and see how they will rise up to attack you, ministers and pastors of sects and religions. Among them there will be some who will only seek the truth, and when they know my word, their faith will stand and they will believe in me. 34. When you recognize me, you will judge how loving the Father is, how wise as a teacher, and how noble and just as a judge. 35. Beloved people, the world demands of you works of perfection, since you are disciples of the Divine Master. Comply with my precepts so that this Master is not misjudged. 36. When the moment of my manifestation approaches, your heart beats hurriedly. In some it is of joy, in others of fear, but you all feel my Divine Presence. 37. I only come to save you, to resurrect you, to offer you a staff on which you can lean throughout your life. 38. He speaks to you who on the cross, dying, battered and tortured by the mob, raised his eyes to infinity, saying, Father, forgive them, because they don't know what they're doing. 39. In that divine forgiveness, I embraced and enveloped all men of all time, because I could see the past, the present and future of humanity. I can tell you in truth and in spirit, that in that blessed hour I was contemplating you that at this time you are listening to my new word. 40. Today I have come to get you out of your spiritual stagnation, because this humanity has been sleeping for a long time deep into a bed of religious fanaticism, idolatry, false cults and materialism, with which he has wanted to substitute the practice of love for one another, charity, forgiveness and everything that derives from that unique law. 41. In the essence of this word, there is everything the world needs to regenerate, return to the true path and rise up to my spirit by love. What will become of this people, if they do not listen carefully or properly understand the lesson that in the third era I have brought you? Great trials await you if you do not strengthen yourself in my word, and if you do not take refuge in the divine ark of my mercy. 42. Do you by any chance believe that it pleases me to see you go through vicissitudes and drink gall and vinegar on earth? No, people. I do not want life to treat you as prisoners or exiles, but as worthy children of God in all respects. 43. I see that you have become familiar with the tenderness of my word and with the forgiveness that emanates from it, without wanting to realize that the hour of the tests is approaching and you have not wanted to prepare yourself to succeed in them. 44. You call yourselves humble and before your father you are showing yourselves ungrateful and proud. Is this perhaps the example that I receive of your testimony of my truth that you spread throughout the world? Think about all this and examine your behavior, so that you do not judge my word harsh. 45. The time is ripe for merit, O beloved people. In my works you can find the necessary examples to regulate your actions, embellishing them with the light that I shed in each of my teachings. 46. Tell me, have I disowned you when you have failed? Have I left you behind, abandoned, when some stumbling block has stalled? Have I been cruel to you when you have fallen defeated by pain? However, I see that those I call my disciples with so much love, they abandon their brothers in misfortune, they ignore the one who makes a detour, instead of approaching with charity to help you correct and sometimes become judges, taking causes that do not belong to them to judge. Is that my teaching? No. Your consciousness tells me. I want you to judge yourselves meticulously, so that you can go polishing so many rough edges that your feelings suffer and you can begin to be my disciples. 47. Do you pretend to teach my doctrine, your heart being full of passions, defects and human miseries? Remember that I have told you infinite times that a blind man cannot guide another blind man without the risk of tripping or falling both in an abyss. 48. This is the voice that emerges from the sixth seal, the Book of God, whose penultimate chapter has been opened to overflow in wisdom upon all spirit and above all understanding. 49. This light is the new iris under which the children of God will make a spiritual covenant in the third era, after the great test has passed, purifying and renewing the world. That is why I have had to be extensive when giving my message to this people, because I want him to be strong in the fight. That is why I have claimed him and I have judged him, 
I do not want the world to be the one who corrects your imperfections, because I am not going to send you to learn, but to teach. 50. People. Did you feel shaken a few moments before my light came to make a word on the lips of the spokesman? You were right. I bless your presentiment. 51. My peace be with you, people of Israel, people who carry in your spirit the law that Jehovah gave you through Moses, that you have the word of Jesus written in your spirit and that you are already receiving the revelation of the Holy Spirit. In truth, I tell you that you are the children of light and that for no reason can you lose your way. 52. This spirit that you feel descending as light into your mind is that of the Father, of the one who revealed the law to you and who said, I am Jehovah, the one who made the heavens and the earth and everything created. This spirit that fills your inspiration with understanding and puts words of wisdom on your lips, it is that of that master who on earth did works powerful and bequeathed the doctrine of love. 53. Now I come to men to manifest myself through their consciousness. I come in the light that illuminates minds, in the effluvium that only the heart knows how to feel, in the essence that is bred of the spirit. 54. It is the time of awakening, of spiritual fullness, in which you will all be soldiers, you will all be peasants, you will all be disciples. 55. In the past times you specified to delight yourself eating the bread of my word, you sought me to sweeten your heart and to regain your peace, without thinking that every spirit brings a message to make known and a wealth of goods to distribute among his brothers in need. 56. My word in this time has come to take you out of the darkness of a selfish life, withdrawn and sterile, to open paths of light and offer you fields to plant. I know that, although in appearance you are rude, ignorant and poor, spiritually you have the wealth of experience that has given you the long path of your evolution. 57. An aura of light will surround my people, when he arises as an apostle to spread the knowledge that I have revealed. By then you will have already recognized the power of my word and you will have complete knowledge of your gifts, those gifts that were latent for a long time in your being, waiting for the right moment to manifest. 58. How many doctrines, how many cults of God and new ideas about the spiritual and about human life are you going to find? Each one will show you, if you know how to penetrate and analyze it, a good and fair part and a wrong part, far from the truth that is justice, love and perfection. 59. Where you find errors, ignorance or evil, extend the essence of my doctrine that because it is mine cannot carry mixing impurity or bugs. 60. My teaching is absolute, it is complete, it is perfect. 61. He who has full conviction of my truth will never mix strange liturgies that he sees in others with my work, recognizing that my doctrine contains all that of good and true I could find in other doctrines. 62. Each of my lessons, however simple they are, are pages of knowledge for your spirit, which will soon collect my word to bring it as a seed of life to humanity. 63. You still do not know how to call your brothers to be heard by all. I tell you, don't be impatient, that when I contemplate that you are already strong, I will prepare the way for you and give you the means. 64. Blessed are you who, when praying, seek Mary as intercessor and intermediary, because spiritually she is your mother, the one I left at the foot of the cross, so that she would watch over all men and that you would love her and in her lap you would seek consolation. 65. Mary came from the divine bosom to incarnate in the world to fulfill a mission as a woman and as a mother. 66. Only from a pure flower like her could the fruit sprout that would give redemption to humanity, the promised fruit by the Father to the patriarchs of the first times and to whom they gave the name of Messiah. 67. When the Spirit of Mary had fulfilled its mission of love, tenderness and sacrifice on earth, it returned to the breast of perfection where she had come from, because Mary is not a being subject to evolution like other spirits. Mary is a divine expression, she is the tenderness of God. 68. This doctrine brings light to those who have not been able to contemplate the truth of that revelation. 69. Spiritualism opens an infinite field of advancement to the thought and heart so that you may rise up on the path of wisdom. 70. You people, who by listening to my word are entering that world of the spirit, you are already beginning to look with clarity what you have only seen through mysteries and enigmas. 71. 
At this time you should no longer be men of blind faith, of faith that does not reason or analyze. Your spirit has grown up and wants to know, wants to deepen and then I have seen that the time is propitious to send you my light as the spirit of truth, to clarify and explain all the mysteries, as he had promised you through Jesus. 72. Tomorrow, when you have understood the essential points of my doctrine and are qualified to give explanations of all this to whoever requests it, you will see that this world that took my name, blinded by the vanity of his earthly glories and the triumphs of his science, begins to return his eyes towards me, recognizing the doctrine of Christ as the key that opens the doors of truth. 73. But this new humanity, developed and awakened of understanding, will demand the explanation of the revelations, clarification of mysteries, analysis of what you received figuratively, and I want you to let the simple people explain the meaning of my word and humbly teach what I have revealed to them. Have I told you that this people will be the one to interpret the ancient scriptures fairly? Well, if the past is going to help know how to explain it, what is present will know how to present it with such simplicity that it will amaze many. 74. Mosism, Christianity, Spiritualism, here are three different lessons on a single doctrine. That of love. 75. The number of those who will get up to spread this seed is short. But why should they not be enough, if in the second era my disciples were counted and yet they made humanity know the word of Christ? 76. Strengthen your spirit in my teaching, O my new disciples, and wish to be worthy to be sent tomorrow to the nations, because your wish will be a proof of love, faith, and goodwill. My peace be with you.